How's it going everybody? It's Sean here, back today to give you guys a review of this size Nike Cortez in this flat pewter colorway. Today's video as always is sponsored by Hefalux. When it comes to sneakers, comfort is king. So when you buy a pair of shoes and find out they're uncomfortable, one of the easiest ways to fix that is to swap out the insoles. So that's where Hefalux comes into play. If you check out their website, which I've linked down below in the description box, you'll see they sell a variety of ETPU insoles, which really is the same material you'll find inside Adidas Boost. So if you guys are curious to try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and take 15% off your entire purchase, and be sure to tell them I sent you. So this right here is a size exclusive Nike Cortez. The official colorway for this shoe is Flat Pewter, Dark Obsidian, and Sail, and these retailed for a price of 145 Canadian dollars, which is the equivalent to roughly 105 US dollars converted. And I want to give a huge thank you over to Size Canada for sending me over this pair. Currently, these are sitting on the Size Canada website, so if you guys are curious to check them out, I'll add a direct link down below for you guys to buy these. So the Nike Cortez is one of Nike's most important and most historical sneakers of all time, which debuted back in 1972. And after all these years, it stood the test of time, it's still one of Nike's flagship models. Even though it might have a bit more of a niche and cult following compared to some of their other silhouettes, like for example an Air Force One or some of the shoes in the Air Max line. Still, the Cortez is very famous in its own right and we're still seeing exclusive colorways released in 2023 just like this one. So taking a deep dive into the details, first off, running down the toe box, we have this grey coloured suede which is a very fuzzy, long-haired suede, and it feels very plush to the touch. This same suede covers the eye stays of the shoe, and it's cut in this jagged fashion. And then surrounding the side panels of the shoe, we also have a gray suede here, but this suede is completely perforated all across. Overlaid on top of this mid-panel, we have this dark blue colored swoosh, and the same dark blue leather covers the top portion of the heel, and pressed across, we have Nike branding in white. Beneath this wrapping around the bottom of the heel, we have more of that shaggy, long-haired suede that we saw earlier on the middle of the toe box. And then as we turn our attention back to the front, so attached to the laces, these come with a metallic lace dubre or lace lock, and here we have Cortez 72 branding. And as far as the laces go, so these come with two different lace options. The standard default lace is a flat style lace in the sail or cream color, and this lace feels very broken in and very vintage to the touch. But if you're not feeling these laces, they also give you a mixed grey and blue coloured lace as well. But for me, I like the more vintage look of these cream laces, so that's what I'm going to lace my shoe with. Underneath this, we have your typical nylon tongue, and to give it more of that vintage look, the nylon is coloured in this dark cream colour. And at the very top, we have a white tag with the Nike logo in blue. So the interior of the back half of the shoe is lined in this white coloured synthetic leather, which while it's not a genuine leather, it still gives the shoe a bit more of an elevated look and feel. And then as far as the insoles go, so these come with your typical foam lined insole, and it's lined in this orange coloured textile on the top, and we have Nike branding stamped on the heel in white. So the upper of the Nike Cortez sits atop this basic foam midsole, which is painted in this cream colour, but you'll see on the back half of the midsole, we have a secondary layer of foam, and this layer here is done in a dark blue colour. And then underneath the foam, we have this basic rubber outsole, and this is done in the sail colour, and just like any other Nike Cortez, we have a herringbone style traction pattern that runs from heel to toe, and we have the Nike branding right in the centre. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like most of my other Nike Cortezes, so I would personally recommend going up a half size. So my feet measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, meaning when I go to a shoe store and step on a Brannock device, the thing that measures your foot, I'm actually a size 10 in between a D and an E width. So for the Nike Cortez, I feel like it runs a little bit short. So Size Canada sent me this pair in a size 10, and the width of the shoe is a little bit narrow, but the length of the shoe is where the major problem is. So rocking these true to size, my toe is already hitting the edge of the shoe. So because of that, a 10.5 would have been ideal for me. So that's why I recommend you guys to go up a half size. But if you're someone who's historically fine sticking true to size for the Cortez, then I'd stick with that same size for this pair as well. Moving on to the comfort. So unfortunately, the Cortez isn't that comfortable of a shoe. Keep in mind, this is a model from 1972 and the tech is extremely outdated, it's just a very basic foam underfoot. So with that said, to me at least, it's not really a comfortable shoe whatsoever. You can feel some of that compression of the foam, but it's really nothing to write home about. And I've never really been a huge fan of the Cortez in general, both from an aesthetic standpoint, but more importantly, from a comfort standpoint. 
So if you're someone that normally likes the Cortezes, then you're going to like these. But if you're looking for a very comfortable sneaker to wear every day, then I feel like there's a lot better models out there that I can recommend to you. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and craftsmanship. So first off, material quality, I thought it was decent. The suede, like I mentioned before, had this nice buttery feel to it, and it doesn't have a synthetic felt-like feel like a lot of Nike shoes utilize. So at least from a material standpoint, it was decent. And from a build and craft strip standpoint, I thought my pair was pretty solid. There honestly wasn't any real major issues that I could see, maybe a little bit of glue stains around the swoosh. But after really examining these in person, there's really nothing that I can complain about. So I thought the Nike factory that put these together did a pretty solid job. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet, I'll lace them up and I'll show you guys how these look. Like I mentioned earlier, the Nike Cortez just isn't one of my favorite models when it comes to Nike shoes. But looking at this objectively, I think this is a decent pair. It really has a vintage vibe and feel to it. And this colorway with a mix of gray and blue, I'd say that it's a fairly easy shoe to pull off, especially if this is a shoe you're considering to rock as your everyday sort of sneaker. Aside from that though, I think the price point is also very enticing. Nowadays here in Canada, I'm so used to shoes that cost 200 to 300 Canadian dollars. So it's pretty refreshing to see an option being priced at 145 Canadian dollars instead. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this size Nike Cortez in this flat pewter colorway. What are your overall thoughts on this pair? And let me know down below, are you a fan of the Nike Cortez? Is it not really a model for you? Either way, drop a comment and let's talk about this silhouette. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, follow my Twitter account at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Another big thank you goes out to Size Canada for sending me over this pair, and I'll catch you guys all in my next video.